Hey guys, this is Milo back with another video and today I'm going to be doing a first impression video on a small Holtzbrook axe. This is a similar size to the Grand Forest Brook small forest axe. It's kind of like a large hatchet. And before I start the full breakdown and nitpicking of this axe, I will say that I am an axe restorer. I've been restoring axes for a bit over two years now, and I know a lot about axes and the geometry of them. So let's get straight into this video. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is the axe head, and this is a Swedish modern axe, so we can already know that this axe is going to be very high quality steel, and the temper is going to be very good, so most of my emphasis is going to be on the geometry. So the axe head has a very long bit compared to the size of the head, and also this is good for chopping, like if you're creating a notch going across the grain, you can bite deeper with this axe, and you aren't going to be hitting the handle on the wood. Usually this isn't a problem for me, but if you're chopping into a knot, then you might have to get the axe pretty deep into the wood before it actually releases. And if you look at the axe from the top down, you can see that this axe has a very slim profile, and it has convex cheeks. The slim profile means it's going to be best for chopping wood, which is going across the grain, and that makes it so it can penetrate deep into the wood. And the convex cheeks means that the axe has a high center line, so the middle of the axe is higher than the top and the bottom, and that makes it so the axe can release easier from the wood when chopping. Now, if you look very closely at this axe, you can see this convex feature of the cheeks on the axe is actually very subtle. So there's many other axes that I've used that you can look down the axe and see that the center line is way higher, and that, in theory, is going to make the axe release better from the wood. But since this is such a small hatchet or axe, it's not like you're going to be doing insane chopping and you're going to need to, like, penetrate all the way into the wood and have to like rip the axe out of the wood and like get into some kind of flow like that like for this tool i think that the cheeks are pretty well designed and you can see that the axe head is significantly tapered which is a beard and the bit is a bit wider than the farthest point on the cheeks where it meets the eye of the axe and this is good for smaller axes because it gives you more contact area for the bit, so the chopping performance is better, but it doesn't sacrifice the weight of the axe, so that you can actually like choke up onto the handle and do lighter tasks like carving with it. And if Holtzbrook were to keep the eye narrow because it tapers out, then the eye wouldn't have enough surface area for the wedge, and this axe could come loose eventually, so they added lugs, which is basically more steel underneath the eye so that you can add more surface area, which makes the wedge stay in better and just makes the design a lot better than something like a Hudson Bay axe, which has a narrow eye and that's very prone to getting loose. And you can see that the axe has a polished pull. The pull is not tempered, so that means you can't be hammering mulls and wedges with it. And the bit is also polished where they sharpened it. And I would say my biggest like downside of this axe is that the geometry of the bevel isn't very good. It's very wide, it's closer to like 25 degrees, and also there's a speed bump on the bevel, and that basically means that when you chop into the wood, that's going to like be a very harsh transition. It won't really like cut into the wood very well, and it really reduces the efficiency. So if Holtzbrook were to make this more of a convex edge and really round over that speed bump, you'd have a very durable edge and it'd also perform significantly better. And for the handle, I would say this is a good handle for a store-bought axe, but um, any like handmade custom handle is way better than this. Like I could make a handle way better. The grain orientation is good. It's a good piece of hickory, but the shape is not the best. The palm swell is pretty small and it doesn't really hook onto the hand very well. And I think the handle is way too thick. Like I have really big axes with like a 36 inch handle that's half as thick as this axe handle. So they could really slim it down and that would make it more comfortable and that would absorb shock while chopping, which is very important. 
And similar to the axe head, I will be modifying it to my preference. I'm going to be slimming it down and reshaping it a little bit so it fits my hand better. And for the hang, they have a wooden wedge in the eye with a metal barrel wedge. And overall, this is a decent hang for a store-bought axe, but I could see this coming loose over time because there's a significant gap in the front of the eye where there's no wood. And when I hang axes, I like to make sure that it has complete contact with the wood in the eye so that it can't really wiggle loose over time. And another thing is the wooden wedge is popping out in the back a tiny bit after they put that barrel wedge in. And it's normal for the barrel wedge to crack the wood, but when the wooden wedge starts to pop out, that's not really good. And if that comes out, then you're pretty much screwed. So you might have to rehang this axe after a year or two of use. That's what I'm guessing. Um, but if you want to learn how to hang an axe, I have another video about that. So that's perfect. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the axe sheath. This is a very nice axe sheath for a store-bought axe. I also make axe sheaths, and mine are significantly better than this. But from a utilitarian aspect, this sheath will be all that you really need. The leather is about like 8 to 9 ounces thick. It's vegetable tan leather, which means it was tanned using only natural tannins like oak bark. And that's important for axes and other blades because it doesn't rust it. Uh, it's a very tight sheath because it's covered on the top, the front, and the bottom. So once you tighten it with the little um, lace that they provide, it's very snug and it's not going to come off. And I'm not going to be modifying the axe sheath, but I am going to be making a pattern out of it so that I can replicate it. And I actually really like this design because it covers the eye. It really just complements the axe head well in my opinion. And overall for this axe, I would say it's worth the price based on what you receive in this package. But I would say that you, I would only recommend it if you have a lot of disposable income and that buying this axe wouldn't really be like a big hit on your bank account. Just because buying a council tools axe or a cheaper axe would pretty much give you the same function. And also if you're a beginner, then you can learn on a cheaper axe. You don't really want to buy an axe and then mess it up because you don't know how to care for it and then be kind of screwed. You want to kind of like work your way into it and start off with cheaper equipment in my opinion. And overall, this is a great axe. I'd recommend it and thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to look out for the, the modding video which is going to be part 2. And peace out guys. Thanks for watching.